I'm Larry Walther. This is PrinciplesOfAccounting.com, Chapter 19, and it covers job costing and modern cost management systems. This module is going to look at actual and applied overhead and how we deal with the differences between those. Recognize that in an earlier module we showed how as overhead was applied to production, remember we debited work in process, and we credited an account called factory overhead. And at that time I said don't worry too much about the factory overhead, we'll cover it later. Well, now is later. Now we're going to look at this factory overhead account. And so factory overhead, we've seen the credit when we apply overhead to production. Let's look at the debit. The debits relate to a variety of overhead costs, indirect labor, indirect material, other items like insurance, factory depreciation, taxes, utilities, maintenance, and so forth. In each case, we're going to debit the overhead account for those costs. The credits will be essentially eventually cash, but in the meantime, salaries payable, supplies inventory, prepaid insurance, accumulated depreciation, or whatever. Importantly, selling general administrative costs are not considered to be part of manufacturing overhead. They're expensed separately as a period expense. We're only concerned with factory overhead items in this case. So here's the journal entry to record the overhead. There's our credits to our payables, our supplies, our accumulated depreciation, all of our manufacturing overhead costs the offsetting debit goes to factory overhead. Now, the factory overhead account is unique. It's not a typical account. It's not an element of financial statements. You won't find it in a balance sheet or income statement. It's not an asset, a liability expense. It's a suspense account, a temporary account, a clearing account. We're going to put monies or amounts into the factory overhead account and take them out of the factory overhead account. Actual costs are placed into the overhead account and applied costs are taken out of the overhead account. Here's the actual ledger page for a factory overhead account. Job A was allocated 15,000 of overhead, so we debited work in process for job A and credited factory overhead 15,000. For job B, we debited work in process, and here's the credit to job B, work in process, and here are the credit for job C, D, and so forth. Those are the allocations, and there's the actual cost, the offsetting debit that we saw a moment ago. Notice the account is zeroed or balanced out. Here's a T account. It's probably clearer to show how this works. In this case, we have our 100000 of overhead incurred, crediting our various payables and so forth, and debiting factory overhead. And there's the allocation, crediting overhead and debiting our various work and process accounts. That sweeps it out or zeroes out the overhead account. Of course, you might consider that we have underapplied overhead. Here in the middle, I show there's 100000 that was actually incurred, but we only applied 90000 to production. That left us with 10,000 of unapplied or underapplied overhead. We're going to close out or zero out the factory overhead account by crediting factory overhead and debiting cost of goods sold. Underapplied, as I've shown, is also deemed to be unfavorable. Perhaps it occurred because not enough jobs were produced to absorb all of the cost based on the allocation rate, or maybe we had overruns in the actual cost that incurred. Whatever, it's an unfavorable situation. As we zero out the factory overhead account, we're going to increase our expenses for cost of goods sold. So I'm going to place that cost into cost of goods sold. Overapplied is the alternative situation. I've applied 110,000 to my various jobs, but only incurred 100,000. Now I need a $10,000 debit to balance out my factory overhead account, and I'm going to credit or reduce cost of goods sold since I didn't spend as much as I allocated. Overapplied overhead is a favorable situation. Less has been spent than anticipated for the level of output achieved, and the balance I've shown is transferred out of factory overhead and reduces cost of goods sold. Now, I took all of the underapplied or overapplied overhead to cost of goods sold. Perhaps theoretically a more appropriate approach would be to allocate the under overapplied overhead to work in process, to finished goods and cost of goods sold on some kind of pro rata basis. I mean, the cost related to all of those goods, whether they're still in production or not. However, if it's not a largely material amount, many companies will simply choose to charge or credit cost of goods sold to dispose of that amount rather than going through the allocation process. GAAP also addresses this, by the way. Generally accepted accounting principles require that underapplied overhead relating to facilities, wasted material, the allocation of fixed production overhead, and so forth be charged to the current period as was illustrated. So there is some basis for supporting the allocation of cost of goods sold. So in closing, let me again indicate, because this is often a confusing subject for students, when we allocate overhead to production, we'll debit the inventory account work in process and credit factory overhead. As we incur the actual cost, we'll be debiting factory overhead.
if there's a perfect allocation of everything that was actually spent, there will be no balance left in the overhead account. It goes away. If there's any balance in there, under-applied or over-applied, we'll transfer that balance to the cost of goods sold account as part of our process for completing or adjusting and closing financial statements at the end of a period.